The data, data tells us everything we need to know about being human. Spock started it. Spock character, no doubt, is a great way to explore what it means to be human. Here's this alien who has no emotion, but he's half human. So we can play with Spock a little, mess him up here and there, and we do. Every once in a while you get these funky responses from Spock. But Spock is a living being with the ability to have emotion come out. Data is, an, is a step beyond in the evolutionary chain of characters that allow us to explore what it means to be human. Data wanted to explore everything. He wanted to own a cat. He writes poems for his cat. Yes, I have several copies of it downloaded and look at it often. <laughs> and, well, I have cats, and so I like reading Data's poetry on spot. I won't recite the poem. I have to stop myself right there. Um, but Data is a, 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 like a little kid. He's a blank slate, and he has no, that emotion chip issue later is a whole nother situation. But Data has no way of knowing what emotion is, no way of really connecting with humanity. And so we can have him paint, we can have him have a pet cat, we can have him be curious about facial hair. The simplest things that make us human are explored through data. And through data, therefore, I think that we can understand the most basic question that anthropology asks. What does it mean to be human? Oh, well, humans have art. We create things. So we have data creating art and trying that out. Things like that. So it's really a really good characterization of what it means to be human, asking that question repeatedly with data. Star Trek addresses universals, global universals. You guys know about Amnesty International? Oh, yeah. Basic human rights, right? You ever read, really read, the Amnesty International statement online? Every one of you will recognize the words of the Federation. The Constitution of the Federation reads like the list that Amnesty International has on their site. So Star Trek really is about not only basic human rights, we feel like good people, we want to do good things. We come together to share this and support one another so we can continue being like this. Star Trek addresses basic humanoid rights. And then that always messes me up when I teach my human evolution class because instead of saying hominid or hominoid, I keep saying humanoid. <laughs> and I have to come back to the 21st century sometimes and remind myself. Anyhow, this is the one big aspect of Star Trek that I don't think is talked about enough. We're all here at this convention to participate in Star Trek some way. Star Trek is progressive or futuristic mythology. We've chosen as a culture to accept or embrace the ideologies, the philosophies of Star Trek for our lives. And that's what binds us, that common ideology here that binds us as a subculture and fandom. It also validates us as a culture. And I include us because I'm here. I'm in it, okay? Um, and we use it, we look to Star Trek for ethical and moral guidance. It's our narrative. It's the narrative of this culture the same way the Bible is the narrative for Christianity. It's no different than the Torah or the Koran. And I know a lot of work is out there that talks about Star Trek as a religion, and a lot of people that are in Trek or in sci-fi in general don't consider themselves religious in the classic sense. So I, I want to, you know, use that term loosely, quotations. But, and in place, talk to you about the narrative that is Star Trek. Because it's that narrative that gives us this ability to come together as a group and propel ourselves to become better people. <coughs> and establish our own personal and group morals and ethics based on what we see on that screen. How, uh, 
and we have about a half hour. How many of you, and I think that's what keeps Star Trek around and going for the number of years that it's been going for. It's not on the air right now, but do we need it to be? No. It would be nice, but let's not jump the gun. I got standards about what it would mean to put Star Trek back on the air and how I want it to look. Okay? <laughs> Another film, fantastic. Let's talk about what the story is first. You know, we want to keep these things in line with what we have come to know and appreciate as Star Trek. And I agree with Larry that for Star Trek to be as successful as it has been, it needs to be episodic because that's how you get your lessons, episodically. Now, in my original survey that's been out, 200 out of 4,017 individuals indicated that they became fans of Star Trek in some way because of the new film. So however we need to keep Star Trek out there, I think it's hugely important that we do. Yeah? That's actually right. My wife totally hates Star Trek. Never was a fan. You saw the new film, she became a fan. And that, oh. it's just based on the storyline, and she actually could relate to it. And that's where Star Trek is. is the reason why I watch it, I relate to it. <coughs> There's got to be one character in any one of the films, any one of the episodes, that at least one person here relates to that character. And that's what it is. And that's why you see people dressing up the way they do, which is why I asked earlier if there was a particular reason other than you're just hot for bread. And that, that's acceptable, too. In terms of costuming, and people wearing certain t-shirts or certain emblems, uh, buying particular merchandise or joining particular clubs or groups. People in this culture need very badly to participate in the myth, participate in the narrative, the way that you'd participate in any other, whether it's going to church or church functions, etc., etc. We come to Star Trek conventions. And we participate in the narrative because it has meaning to us and we were, re we're reaffirming that meaning every time we do this. And I think that looking at people in costume, you've got to understand they've got a particular world view that they have latched onto. And whether we're not even wearing anything that identifies us, other than my nine million and one tattoos, there's a reason for that too. I'm participating in something that's hugely important to me, that speaks to me and now it's a part of my physical being. People are participating with the culture. They're identifying with characters that speak to them. Particular characters send messages out. Time and time again, you've heard actors talk about all the stories that come from fans telling them how they've impacted their lives. Vegas Convention has given out awards to people in the medical field who have been inspired by Dr. McCoy. How many astronauts can we name who say they've been in influenced by Star Trek? How cool is that? Star Trek is changing the world. We have a holographic speech pathology lab that was built in Pennsylvania a number of years, a few years ago, maybe five or six at this point. People from the military aided this speech pathologist in her quest to create something that was based on the holograph from Star Trek, the holograph, the hol holodeck from Star Trek. And she now uses that to reintegrate people into the real world, where, you know, otherwise you'd be getting reintegrated live and personal, and a lot of people are hesitant, and they lack the confidence and the ability to make themselves successful. Now, because of Star Trek, there's a way that people can access an easier route to being reintegrated after some kind of injury along those lines. So, I think there's a lot of cool stuff that we can look, this even research, looking right now, thinking outside the box, at silicon-based life. You can go Google it, there's some cool stuff. Could life be based on another element? Star Trek says so, so why can't I make that so? Oh, that came out interestingly, didn't it? <laughs> well, I will. We'll just make that so. What do you want to do? You can do it. The technologies... We have a hypo spray for diabetics. People have made a small-scale one that's being used on cats to give injections. The littlest things 
are huge. And people are being inspired to create what they see on TV because they want to make their world better. And I think identifying with characters as, is just like identifying with any character in your narrative. You ask what Jesus would do if you're Christian. You go to the Bible and you look and say, yeah, I want to be a good Christian. I want to be like Jesus. You can do the same thing with Star Trek. I want to be a good person. I want to be like Kirk, or I want to be like Picard, or I want to be like Riker. I want to be like Beverly Crusher. Take your pick. It's there. And the messages are there across the boards. So I think as myth, Star Trek is extremely powerful, and that's why it survives even though nothing is on the air right now.